Let us begin with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we will be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen. Let's look at the third condition that opens a heart to become tempted by signals from the darkness where we fall prey to the counter-inspiration of spiritual desolation. Counter-inspirations of desolation may appear during times of spiritual advancement. After a period of purification marked by desolation, your heart may find peace in the divine inspiration of consolation. During these graced rests, you may be tempted to believe the illusion that you have arrived at the end of your spiritual journey. You experience this state of calm and peace as definitive and feel that you have achieved sanctity, completion, and holiness, that you have it all wrapped up. During these times, almost imperceptibly, a spirit of pride and self-sufficiency takes hold in your heart. I have completed my discernment training. I am a specialist now. When this happens, when not if, the counter-inspirations of desolation return as a warning. This happened to St. Ignatius. He felt that he was among the just and that his spiritual growth was complete. But having experienced a desolation, he realized that he was actually only beginning on the road to salvation. God allows this new form of desolation as a warning to remind you that although you have grown in authenticity and holiness, you are still susceptible to the narcissism and destructive pride that will halt all of your progress towards true happiness and a heart true to itself. Be watchful for the next signs of this kind of narcissism and pride. They usually manifest when you feel so satisfied you start to fall away from your spiritual disciplines, practices of your faith. You might say to yourself, I am healed, or I don't need these practices anymore, or at least I don't need them as much as I used to. We all deceive ourselves and are deceived into believing such things. Two essential lessons. Cultivate humility during the consoling times of divine inspiration. Use your periods of consolation as a preparation for the times of desolation. Be aware and awake, always anticipating the return of the desolation. Plan ahead for when desolation makes its return. And during your time of consolation, Remember how helpless you felt during your time of desolation. This serves as a reminder that God is the only one who stabilizes your heart with the divine inspiration of consolation. Reflection question. Pray to the divine inspire to have your memory energized. Remember a time when you thought you had completed your exercise and just then fell prey to pride. What was the context? Were you surprised that desolation returned when you may have felt on top of the world? Remember the situation and describe it briefly in your journal. Example, I had a sabbatical a number of years ago and part of it involved my making a 30-day retreat. This retreat program called for five one-hour prayer periods a day. I felt I was sufficiently holy at this point in my life and decided I would only do th three of the five. God had other plans for me. I felt so much peace in the three one-hour prayer periods and less peace when I avoided the other two prayer periods. God pulled me in this way to do five by giving me great peace and consolation during those three periods. I finally relented and did the five, 
and continued them throughout the rest of the retreat. Through this experience, I realized how far I still had to grow and was amazed at how proud I had become and out of touch with my own heart. Let's close with a prayer to our Blessed Mother for the spirit of humility and discernment. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may God bless you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.